Thank you for joining me as we continue to share from Mark chapter 13. When the disciples were amazed at the temple buildings, Jesus declares, All these stones shall be thrown down, that there will be great trouble for the nation of Israel. But after a long time, the Son of Man will come again. Let's read again from the beginning of Mark 13. As he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? And Jesus, answering them, began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues. You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, Do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak, but whatever is given you in that hour, speak that, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Now a brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we've just read again Mark 13, verses 1 to 13. Mark gives us two questions. When we read Matthew's Gospel, we see a slightly different formulation. The response there is longer, and there are other issues that Jesus also discussed. But Mark's reporting two of these. Jesus had said, not one stone shall be left upon the other. And so, The question is, when will these things be? When will it happen? And what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? So there is trouble coming. When does it start and when is it going to end? And so we're looking at Jesus' response. His first thing is to say, well, be careful that you are not deceived. For many deceivers will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. So how do you respond to a deceiver? Someone who blatantly tells you a lie, making a claim which is not true. He doesn't come with a sign on his t-shirt saying, I'm a deceiver. He comes pretending to be the genuine article. Obviously, you need to be suspicious of the things that people say, particularly things that they claim about themselves. If a person is talking about the Lord and reports him accurately, then you may have confidence in him. But if he's talking about himself, then be very suspicious. People claim to coming in Jesus' name, but they are coming to deceive. They are coming to take advantage. And it happened within the very early church, and it's happened right throughout history. People see an opportunity to make a name for themselves or to make money for themselves by making claims about themselves. And so many people are gullible and take their words when their words are false. First of all, a warning. Don't be deceived. How can you withstand the deceiver? Well, Satan is behind the deceiver and he tells lies. And so one must test everything against the word of God. And that's what the Ephesian Christians did, according to Revelation chapter 2, tested against the written testimony of the apostles themselves. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen, but the end is not yet. Don't think that the first war that comes is going to be the final war. There are many wars. 
Jerusalem had been threatened by the Assyrians, it had been destroyed by the Babylonians, the Greeks had had a go at it in the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, and they had even desecrated the temple, as warned by Daniel. So the past of Israel has been full of war, and its future will be full of trouble as well. But kingdom against kingdom, this is nation against nation, more than just attacks on Israel. And on top of the wars that have continued since the time of Jesus till this present time, one thing calms down and something else rises up. There will be earthquakes, there will be famines, there will be troubles, pestilences, sicknesses. These are the beginnings of trouble. We see great earthquakes in the earth. We've had great famines in parts of the earth. At the present time, America has copped wildfires. Canada has copped wildfires. Australia has copped wildfires. And then we have these hurricanes, tornadoes. And don't forget the extraordinary flooding. What Jesus is saying is that none of these things is a sign that the end is near. This is just what's going to happen throughout time. These are just the beginnings. When you see these things, realise that what is in store is much worse than anything we've experienced so far. But we also need to be careful for ourselves. God's people will be falsely accused, providing an opportunity for us to preach the gospel, to announce to the world that Jesus will come back, and whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. We are threatened with death. But the point is that Christ died and rose again. And the promise is that whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be resurrected. We will come to live in the kingdom that God will establish. So we need to have that mindset. Many Christians are worried that our liberty as Christians is being taken away in the Western world. This is so that God will give us an opportunity to bear testimony to him before rulers and before authorities, that people might see, if they have eyes to see, that the people they are persecuting are in fact the pillars of society, that they are the righteous ones. So he says, watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils. It's not they might, they will deliver you up to councils. You will be beaten in the synagogues. The Christians will be beaten in the synagogues and Paul would lead the Christians out of the synagogues for that reason, after they had borne testimony to the Jews. This was just the beginning, God's people, driven out of communities that are meant to represent the people of God. Even Jesus was expelled from synagogues and those who bore testimony to him were kicked out of the synagogues and out of the temple. Throughout history, we have churches fighting against believers. It's exactly the same principle. Evil men taking control of the church and killing the true servants of God. And we read about it time and time again because Satan wants to rule the world. To get hold of the church, he established structures so that he could put his men at the top and persecute those who are truly believers. But it's not just the synagogues you'll be brought before rulers and kings for my sake. At sometimes, evil leaders of the church have used the state to persecute true believers. But the purpose is that the true believers will always bear a testimony to the Lord Jesus. In fact, it doesn't matter what we speak. We just speak whatever comes to our mind. But the Holy Spirit is working through our testimony. And... It's not just outside people, it's inside. Brother will betray brother to death, father his child. This is teaching also that Isaiah gave. A father will betray his child. Children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. It applies to the Jewish nation. There's a special word for it, anti-Semitism. And it has been rife for 2,000 years. But it is also believers who are hated by all because we acknowledge Jesus. But we just continue because who else can we follow?